Recently, we saw Ella in action, but now it's time for a bit more T5 testing with this PixArt Sigma release. Here you can see the new PixArt Sigma model compared to the previous PixArt Alpha one. The words there in bold being missing from the previous version, so PixArt Sigma doing a lot better on prompt understanding. To use it without having to do a local install, there is a Hugging Face space available. Links are down in the description. They provide some example prompts down the bottom, but it's ever so much easier to see this in Comfy UI where I can actually show you the SDXL generations right alongside it. Before I get into the comparisons though, there are a few steps you'll need to run through to get this installed. Just a quick note to say that Comfy seems to be the best way to do this right now unless you've got at least 30 gig of RAM. Whilst everything installed okay for me on this original repo, I was a whole 20 meg of VRAM out from actually being able to run their Gradio interface. Oh well. In Comfy UI, however, the requirements aren't quite as bad thanks to being able to easily run the T5 bit on the CPU, meaning it was humming away happily using just 6 gig of VRAM. Thankfully, they provide instructions to getting PixArt models running in Comfy UI, and it's basically just a typical custom node install along with the requirements for PixArt Sigma. Their instructions on screen now show starting from scratch, so if that's your thing then you can follow those exactly. However, they also show PixArt Alpha specific links, so we'll also be changing those up for PixArt Sigma, the new release, instead. I'll also be showing how to use your existing local install of Comfy UI instead of starting from scratch. Note also, if you haven't got a standard Anaconda setup of Comfy UI, maybe you've got the portable download or something else, just remember to adjust any commands to what you normally do for however you're running things at home. Okay, with the caveats out of the way, let's go through these steps one at a time. Heading number one, preparation. Here they're creating a workspace directory, so pick a directory which is good for you. In my case, I've called it GitHub because that's where I already save all my stuff from GitHub. That means I've got GitHub stroke PixArt Sigma and GitHub stroke Comfy UI where they have workspace. Could be totally different for you at home too, so just remember what you're using as your workspace directory. As I've already got Comfy UI installed in an environment with PyTorch, the next three commands can be skipped. Now, don't worry, even though the example there says to use Python 3.9, it is working for me in Python 3.11. All you really need to do here is activate your Comfy UI environment just like you normally do. In my case, it's Conda Activate Comfy UI Pixart. The next three lines are the commands for downloading the PixArt repository and getting the first set of requirements installed, but these instructions are for the previous repository. Just replace that alpha with sigma and you're golden. There's the command for the git clone. Notice the alpha at the end is turned to a sigma. Once that's downloaded, change directory. Once again, that alpha is a sigma. And now you can pip install minus r requirements.txt. On to heading number two, the Comfy UI stuff. This is the custom node install, so the first two commands can be skipped as we've already got Comfy UI installed. Either run the git clone command they've got shown there and then install its requirements, or use Comfy UI Manager where you can use the search feature to find extra models and then just click install. The choice is yours, and if you need more information, it's available on their GitHub page. On to heading number three, then the downloads. Following their commands will download the models into your PixArt Sigma directory. They've also provided links, but once again, remember we're using Sigma and not Alpha. In order to get the links for Sigma, check the available models heading on the GitHub page. So there you can see the T5 and the model I'm using is this PixArt Sigma XL2. You can, of course, use your web browser to download all those files, but personally, I ran through step 1.1 and used the commands there, basically the git clone and the Python tools download.py. 
However you downloaded them and wherever you saved them, you will need to move them to the correct place for Comfy UI. Once again, noting we're using Sigma and not Alpha. The standard SDX LVAE is fine, which you'll likely already have if you've used SDXL in Comfy UI before. Here they are in my Comfy UI directory. So there in models, we've got checkpoints and the model there, the PixArt Sigma XL2. Down in T5, I have the PixArt Sigma SDXL VAE T5 diffusers. And as the VAE, as mentioned, I've just got the standard SDXL one there. OK, on to heading number five, then start Comfy UI. Well, perhaps not quite. The first time I ran it, it gave me an error related to transformers. However, I did manage to fix that by using pip install evaluate. So I suggest you do that now as well. OK, that really should be it now. You've installed the PixArt Sigma requirements, the custom node and its requirements, along with downloading the models to the expected Comfy UI directories. Cool. Time to start playing. Just fire up Comfy like you normally would and then load your PixArt workflow. They provide two examples, but the exact one I'm using here is available to my Patreons as a thank you for helping to support the channel. Notes about the install are also there too. Some notes on using this model first. The guidance scale can be interesting to play with and the default is just 4.5 and they use the DPM++ 2M sampler. As for the workflow I'm using, I'm sending the same prompt to both PixArt Sigma and SDXL. The tests I'm running here are for prompt adherence, a bit like in that previous Ella video. So I'm not seeing which one generates the best image, but which one follows the prompt better. As the T5 encoder can take a little bit of getting used to, let's start with some short prompts and work up from there. A super simple prompt to start with then of a woman. I've got a couple of different samplers for PixArt just because sometimes I prefer one over the other. Looking at that first set of generations, all of the images followed the prompt here, but then it is a really simple one. However, if I start generating even more images, you'll soon see the SDXL model generates, well, quite nice images, but they are all very similar. PixArt Sigma, on the other hand, is generating much more varied things. We haven't given it much to go on, so it is fairly random. Lots of them are in a painting style, but who knows? It could be more realistic or whatever, really. There, for example, we can see the one on the left is a little bit more realistic than the one on the right. But the SDXL models down the bottom, they're all very, very samey, aren't they? Just a couple more PixArt ones there to compare. And yeah, they're, they're quite nice. I like the variety. On to something a little more complex then. Stuff on top of other stuff and next to things. Here, I've got a prompt which asks for a rodent wearing a red cape, and he should be standing on top of a blue box. Next to that blue box, there should be a yellow ball, and the whole thing should look like an oil painting. If you've used Stable Diffusion SDXL before, you'll know that it gets very confused trying to put things next to other things and on top of other things, and it often doesn't get things quite right. We've got the first image out of PixArt Sigma there, and uh, it's, it's correct, that one's right. The rodent is kind of wearing his cape. He's certainly on top of the blue box, and the box is next to a yellow ball. The other PixArt Sigma one, not quite so good. And the SDXL one, pretty nice. It's a good looking rodent. Um, that's actually done pretty well there. But then the next one, the rodent isn't on top of the box. PixArt Sigma, on the other hand, both the rodents are on top of the box and the yellow ball is next to it. SDXL, well, it is very close. However, one thing it certainly doesn't do is match the style I asked for, which is like an oil painting. I guess it must be time to crank the complexity and length up a little bit one more time. You saw the Ella video, of course, you're all regular viewers, aren't you? Let's see how one of the prompts from there holds up in SDXL land. This one is fairly complex. I want a photo style guy who's wearing a fedora and a white t-shirt and on that white t-shirt there should be a rodent wizard on top of that there should be a dark gothic house in the background 
and a green fence. Everything there is struggling a little bit with that level of complexity, though I think typically the Pixar Sigma ones do seem to get most of the elements, especially the Gothic house. Let's just have a look at that final generation there as it plows through. How's the house in that one? Yeah, it's done quite well on the house. Unfortunately, his fedora seems to sort of turn into a wizard hat a little bit at the time, but it's not bad. It's not bad. But what are the limits? How about if I just make stuff up? Horse-headed women? Yes, we can do that. So here we're meant to get a watercolour painting of a horse-headed woman who is wearing a red and white gingham dress and blue trainers. The tacky plastic floor inside her 1960s style American diner is moist. In the background, a vintage photo of a cool rodent hangs on the wall above an old wooden table. So as you can see, SDXL, it, it just can't do the horse-headed woman, whereas Pixar Sigma, it's done very nicely there. Let's make a few more. And here, once again, we can see Pixar Sigma has done very well. It's got the watercolor style, whereas the SDXL one hasn't. She's also wearing the red trainers there, whereas they should be blue, and she hasn't got the horse's head. So looks like Pixar Sigma does very well with that prompt as well. OK, that is quite a lot of things, but how about text? We know that's usually pretty bad in SDXL. Is it any better in Pixar Sigma? It's not. Unfortunately, no, it really isn't there at all. What I'm meant to be getting here is a white-haired bearded man wearing a turquoise suit, orange bow tie and a striped brown and white smoking jacket. He's meant to be holding a sign which reads Cat's Smell, and in the background there should be some cute brown and black rats. Everything is meant to be in an oil painting style with fairly vivid primary colours and rather obvious brush strokes and some colourful houses in the background. As you can see, SDXL completely ignored the rodents, just made everything into cats. Pixar Sigma, of course, much more closely matching the prompt. As you can see, you can certainly get some very interesting images. Well worth a try, I think. And just because you all seem to like the UDO outro song from my previous video, here it is again in case you missed it. Thank you for watching. It really means a lot to me. Especially when you like and share to everybody everywhere.